My name is Ahmed Hassan, and I'm going to tell you about the uh, concrete which can save our environment and up to 80% carbon dioxide emission it can let down. So, well, I'm a student of civil and structural engineering in master's degree at the University of Wollongong. And let's start it. I'm telling you about the, that concrete. Why we need, it's about all geopolymer concrete and comparison, little bit comparison with the ordinary concrete and how it work and what he's going to save and how, how, how is a big question. So let me introduce you. It can save up to 80% carbon dioxide emission in the atmosphere. So you are saving 80% of it atmosphere and it also, mitigate the dependency of ordinary concrete so if you got a rid if you got rid of ordinary concrete you are also going for geopolymer concrete that is very suitable for our, uh, temperature and atmosphere you can use in either uh, in building roads either in uh, a construction site so it also help in construction fields and other many sectors many sectors includes roads and infrastructures like all this stuff here yeah? So first, I have to tell you uh, how we can make geopolymer and various methods of making geopolymer. There are four types from which you can make geopolymer. First is slag-based geopolymer concrete. Second one is rock-based geopolymer concrete. Third one is uh, geopolymer concrete via fly ash. And fourth one is ferrocellate geopolymer cement. Okay. So this is my research question, which I have to answer in my report, but I'm not going to tell you much about this one. I just want to make a concept, what is geopolymer concrete and how it will help in our construction site. So these are my question, by the way. Well, how to make cost-effective geopolymer concrete using fly ash, and is it possible to achieve all the desirable properties related to mechanical, thermal, and durability in real example? So this is the basis of uh, basics, uh, basic diagram, basic flow chart of making geopolymer concrete. Yeah, you can easily understand geopolymer concrete via fly ash. So we use fly ash from industries which can come. Yeah, and uh, second, I would have to use aggregate sand. It should be a raw one or maybe a salty one, and. Alkali activators play a vital role, which is made up of sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, and sodium silicate. And we're adding water. And in the mixing, we got a geopolymer concrete straight away. So as I'm telling about the fly ash-based geopolymer concrete advantages, the bigger advantage is that the elimination of polluted concrete and placing it with a friendly concrete, which is which can save our world for our children and environment. Decline the dependency of ordinary concrete, compressive strength and flexure strength, which are the basic thing in the concrete, is higher in geopolymer concrete as compared to portable and cement. Okay. We can get more durable concrete when compared to the ordinary cement. Limitation of fly ash geopolymer. The limitation is still there. Workability is a bigger issue. In workability, we got a lot of issues while doing because of its smooth smoothness. It's not smooth as ordinary concrete. So it's more plastic viscosity, fast setting sign. So this is the very big issue in the fly ash. We are we will come over this one and the availability of materials are not much common as the other concrete. The availability, the material, the, the material for making geopolymer is not much uh, uh, in sequence as in ordinary, ordinary concrete. So that's why the cost of this concrete is going up. So if these are making in very good scenario in very deep them, to, if you are producing a lot of geopolymer concrete, then the cost will definitely mitigate. So this is my suggestion. In my view, to save environment is high. We should do that because diamond is always worthy. Please give me your view and uh, tell me if you want to change something or you want to add something. Thanks for watching.
thermal, so it may be confused. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, 